Hello YouTube, so on today's video I got something a little bit different, N normally I'm a little bit more uh, upbeat I suppose in my videos, but in today's video I'm just going to be really chill and we're just going to read some Dreamcast official magazine, this is the second issue which is from November of 1999, so I really like reading this magazine and everything, I, I really enjoy it, this is this magazine. Uh, this specific one is one of my most prized things in my collection, actually. This was a gift from Silver Bullet Bill, who some of you guys might recognize. He comments on a lot of these videos. This is one of those things that is very special to me. He gave it to me for a birthday because he knows how much I love the Dreamcast and everything. So this means a lot to me. This is one of those things that's not very expensive. But it just means a lot. That's kind of the that's kind of the overall arcing theme with the Dreamcast magazine is that it's not worth a lot, but it, I I like it a lot, <laughs> even though I I never read it as a kid. So I figured on today's video I'd just go over this issue kinda with you guys to the best of my ability. Sorry, I don't really have the best camera for this type of thing, but. Still, we're, we'll read the articles that interest me, at least. So, the first thing, we have an advertisement for the game Trick Style, which is alright. They have a review of that game. Trick Style was a launch game for the Dreamcast, so... This... This magazine... Basically enough, this magazine covers the launch of the Dreamcast, which... I know might sound weird, because this is the second issue and everything, but... The first issue only really covers Sonic Adventure... Because the first issue launched in, like, August. So they didn't have all the launch games and everything. And the first issue is just kind of a mess, <laughs> honestly speaking. But this one covers all the launch games and everything. So, let's see. As you guys can see from this page right here, it's just your basic table of contents, things like that. Uh, let's see, you get the time tunnel, which is supposed to tell you when games are coming out. Things of that nature. Uh, and then down here at the bottom it tells you how to and strategies. They have a they have a portion in this magazine where it's just dedicated to unlocking stuff in Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur was the big game for this issue. So that's pretty neat. Alright, so skipping over a page. One sec, I'm going to move you guys a little bit more to the right. So that way we can get a better... There we go. That's a better center fold shot. So, up the top here, it just goes over uh, some games that are on a demo disc for this. So, this magazine would always come with demo discs. And I don't have any of the demos with me. Or, well, I have a bulk of, I have like six of the demos, but I don't have the demo for this one, funnily enough. Uh, so, on this one would be Virtual Fighter 3TB, Dynamite Cop. Trick style, Toy Commander. So, all pretty good games for a demo disc, in my opinion. Then, so right here we have our letters to the editors. So right here, you guys can see the three editors. There was only three people writing for this magazine. And to my knowledge, you can't really find a lot about any of them. I, I googled, their, googled them, and I couldn't find anything. So, kind of interesting. Uh, let's see, right here somebody miss mentions how Final Fantasy VIII came out on PS1 around the same time the Dreamcast launched and everything. How they can't how they can't play it on their Dreamcast. Uh, Fighting Force 2 review, or advertisement, which I don't think released by this time. I'm not sure. Let's see, some Shenmue previews. Shenmue was... Uber hyped up at this time. Just really, really into Shenmue marketing. And then right here, you have somebody asking about Tekken on the Dreamcast, whether or not Namco would ever bring it. So at the time, Te Tekken was a PlayStation exclusive. So there's all this speculation, though, because the Dreamcast ended up getting Soul Calibur, which was a, a sequel to a PS1 game called Soul Edge. So there was all this speculation that Tekken might come to the Dreamcast, and of course that never happened, but, you know, still interesting. 
so over here we have some articles about Sonic the Hedgehog on uh, Neo Geo Pocket Color and then an article about the Sonic the Hedgehog movie which is an anime OVA from the 90s and it's not that bad I I've watched it it's it's okay it's an it's an anime OVA from the 90s we have an NFL 2K advertisement over here on the side. This this magazine has so many ads in it. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. But, yeah, so, let's see. You have a an article about something on 3DO. Uh, Might and Magic 3. Um, drops Remember Tron. So, this is an article, interestingly enough, about the game Drones. Which was a cancelled game. And... I believe it's uh, Dreamcastic has a very has a video about that game, and it looks really interesting. But again, again, it's it's canceled, so we're probably it'll probably be one of those ones we never get to play. So up here, this is really cool. This is a just small little blurb about all this Neo Geo pocket color stuff, and. It's just pretty cool because Sega was working with Neo Geo or. Yeah, Neo Geo, not Neo Geo, SNK at the time with the Neo Geo Pocket Color. And they they go over imports a lot in this magazine. It's it's really weird because like it import gaming just isn't very convenient because if you just wait, a lot of those imports will come out here in America, but one game that I mention is Sakura Tyson 3, which is uh Sakura Wars 3 here in the west but again we never got that game here so and it's like a it's a strategy rpg with a ton of text and everything and like it's just completely unreadable so this is cool though this is uh early screenshots and whatnot of skies of arcadia or as it's being known as eternal arcadia and they mention its first name as project Ares which was the working title for it and everything. And you get some really good... Let me see if I can... Let me zoom in on this for you all. You get some art, some early artwork of Vice, uh, if the glare allows it. So that's what Vice was supposed to work like originally in the game. Sorry about that glare, you guys. Um, so that's how he was supposed to originally look. I, I like his final design significantly more i think it's just mm, just better so we have an advertisement for evolution the world of sacred device which is one of the first rpgs on the dreamcast very okayish game just okayish but this is a preview for f355 uh challenge and that's a ferrari racing game it it was okayish it was okay-ish. I didn't like it very much. I don't like racing games. We have an advertisement for Suzuki All-Stair. Let's see, another advertisement. Like I said, this, this magazine just has so much ads. But part of the reason why is because Sega was just trying to make make as much money as they could. As fast as they could to try and put off negative negatives from the Saturn era and everything. Here we go. Test Drive 6 advertisement. That game's so bad, but yeah. So this is cool. There's stickers right here. I still have these. I'm not going to peel them off, but for Ready to Rumble and NFL Blitz 2000. So there's stickers right there. And it's just more ads for Midway games, but at least there's stickers. Midway Midway gave the Dreamcast a lot of really early support and then right here we have the time tunnel now this is weird because this is kind of a this is kind of a quick a quick overview of sega as a company and everything so this is pretty interesting you get to see the big games that were on the saturn the genesis whatnot very interesting and then it ends of course with the dreamcast and then, of course, we have, immediately following that, another advertisement. This one for Tokyo Extreme Racer, which is, eh, pretty good game. And then, bam. 
Marvel vs. Capcom advertisement, which is a great game. So, this thing is loaded with ads. So, right here, this is interesting because this is the Planet of the Apes, which was a. ended up getting canceled. The Dreamcast version ended up getting canceled. But the PS1 version got released, and to my understanding, the only difference between the PS1 version and the Dreamcast version was the Dreamcast version was going to have, like, better graphics. So, that's, I don't know if we're missing out much on that one. This is interesting, though. Croc 2, so, this wasn't actually Croc 2. This game was just called Croc 1. Uh, for those of you who probably don't know, I'm a huge Croc fan and everything, so I've always had a little bit, and by a little bit I mean a lot of interest in this, but f to all my understanding and everything, this game was supposed to be an amalgamation of Croc 1 and Croc 2, so it was supposed to be like Croc 1.5, like it was supposed to have, it was supposed to be like a remake of Croc 1, but with, uh, with... What was it? Uh, with some stuff from Croc 2 in it. Sorry. Then, here we go. We have right here. So, this right here is just called Incoming. And this whole thing just goes over all the games that are supposed to be coming out in the next couple months and whatnot. And the really interesting thing about this is there's no days that they're releasing on. And my theory is, is that back in those days, back in these early days of gaming so to speak, if you could consider the 2000s the early days of gaming, <laughs> at least most games would come out on a Tuesday, so I think they just didn't even bother to print the days, because, I mean, people would just go to the game store on Tuesday and see what new games came out most of the time. So we have an, a write-up on MDK2, which is a, I didn't get very far into, I, I, I've beaten MDK1, MDK1 was a pretty good game. And I didn't get very far into MDK2, but I need to play more of it because it seemed like a huge improvement over MDK1. Then we have a advertisement for Speed Devils. Then we have a write-up for WWF Attitude, which is an absolutely terrible pro wrestling game, but whatever. Uh, advertisement for NFL Quarterback Club, which is terrible. And then an MDK2 advertisement, almost immediately following the write-up about MDK2. And then what's interesting, though, is over here, you have some games that are listed for coming out. And a bulk of these didn't come out. Renegade Racers, which according to this was supposed to be a wacky character racing game on speedboats. And of course that never came out, but sounds kind of interesting. And then Star Trek New Worlds. Which, I, that sounds really familiar. I'll have, to, I'll have to look that one up later after this. So then we have a look at Argonaut's game, Red Dog Superior Fire Power. Which is a pretty good little game. You, you might want to look into it. It's a pretty fun little shoot 'em up And that was made by the same people who made Croc. So it's instantly interesting. That NBA Showtime, which was, meh, okay. It's an NBA Jam game. So this is interesting though. This is the this is an advertisement for Interact. And the main thing that I find interesting is this controller right here. Let me zoom in for y'all. Is this Radius Racing Pad now? I don't know if that's if that got released or not. I'm pretty sure it didn't. Because I, I do a lot of browsing for Dreamcast stuff in my free time. And I've never seen that in my entire life prior to seeing this photo. So very, very interesting. And then right here, we have Cool Borders 2000. Or, well, Cool Bo Borders Burr, as it was known in Japan. But it ended up having to get its name changed to steep slope sliders or something like that in america but it, it's cool borders it's it's okay it runs at 60 frames per second like uninterrupted which is impressive so right here we have this is the heart and then this is the soul so it's an advertisement for soul caliber this is actually my favorite ad in this magazine there's just something kind of clever and dumb about that wordplay to me that i really like then we have more write-ups for uh, write-up for Toy Commander, 
and then a write-up for the game Castlevania Resurrection. And I'm sorry, you guys, my my heater is going off. But so this write-up for Castlevania Resurrection is really interesting, though, because this was one of the games that was really hyped up and everything, and it got canceled pretty early. So I'll just read it off because we don't. Some of you might not know a lot about it. Uh, Count Dracula. Doesn't like trespassers, especially the press. Luckily, we're well stocked with garlic bulbs. First and foremost, we've dug up some new gameplay details. Fans of past Castlevania outings will be happy to hear that both Sonya and Victor will be able to acquire secondary weapons that are powered up by heart icons, which as usual appear after destroying torches and enemies. The time around, however, their effects will be all the more devastating. Unleashing the Crucifix secondary attack, for instance, sends a flurry of the anti-vampire anti icons shooting every which direction. Perfect war when surrounded. And they're saying that the game's on track for a spring release. Yeah, sorry, I, I, I didn't want to read all of that, so I just read, generally speaking, some of it. And you get some more screenshots of the game. The game looks fairly foreign to development. I guess it looks it looks fairly fairly far into development. It's one of those games that if it ever gets leaked, that's one of the ones I'd immediately burn because I've always wanted to play it. So right here you get the subscribe to the Dreamcast magazine thing. Save 69% and for 15 bucks you get six issues of the magazine because this was a bi-monthly magazine. And you get six demo discs, and in my opinion, that was that's a really good deal because that ends up being like two fifty for the magazine for six magazines and six demos. Like, come on, that's a great deal. And then here we go, Power Stone ad, and this is another one that I kind of like. This is from so all these screenshots are from that era before we had like capture equipment things like that. So. None of the screenshots look particularly great. Oh, wait. I forgot to zoom you guys out. Sorry about that. But, yeah. So, let's see. We have a write-up for the game Soul Fighter, which was a beat-em-up, and it's kind of trash, but I I kind of like it because I'm trash. And then a Neo Geo Pocket Color advertisement. A advertisement for the game TNN. Uh, hardcore Heat, a Draconis Cult of the Worm write up, which is a pretty fun little game. Uh, I liked it. It's a it's a action adventure style game, kind of like Zelda, kind of not though. And then the game Arrow Wings has an ad, a Speed Devils advertisement again, another one. They were pushing that game hard, you guys. And then Fighting Force Two right up on this game which is considered by a lot of people the worst Dreamcast game so <laughs> I don't know if you should be doing a write up on that game and then an advertisement for Expendables which is a pretty decent little kind of Contra clone I guess and then another advertisement for the game Slave Zero and the interesting thing about this one is that right here that's not the final box art that's just mock mock up box art so 